Thanks so much for having us, Brian. Thanks, Brian. We are we're so excited to be here. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be talking about APIs and focusing in specifically on REST APIs. Now, Taylor Swift's concert movie was just released uh, a few weeks ago, I guess a month ago now. Um, so this is going to be Taylor's version of the talk, which I'm very, very excited about. Ken, how do you feel? Are you are you a Swifty? My uh, daughter is, so I guess I'm a Swifty parent. A Swifty parent. Okay, that counts. So um, everybody joining us today, you can either become a Swifty for the day or just think of this as a talk about APIs. That's fine too. Now, in honor of Taylor, I did want to kick things off with a song that seems appropriate, right? Um, so I use generative AI to write a song for us about bad APIs. And I want to share with you what it came up with. Now, Ken and I did tweak it a little bit. Now, uh, Ken, are you a singer? Mm, only when I want to scare people away. Like, if you want me to start singing, we'll watch the ratings of this uh, go to zero. Uh, so let's not have me sing. How about you? Uh, also not, not a singer. So you want to just read it? Yeah, let's, okay. let's read lyrics. And hey, if somebody out there is really good at music and wants to put this to a tune and record it, um, that'd be amazing, but that's not my skill set. So there we go. That's we my go. disclaimer. All right, API woes, developers lament. We built an API, thought it was okay. Developers tried to use it, but it caused dismay. No version control, no docs to be found. We named things haphazardly, left them unrenowned. There's a pre-chorus. Developers called, we broke their code, status codes, and errors we ignored. We rate limited them, didn't care at all. Our API was a disaster. We watched it fall. Oh, the chorus. Look what you made me do. Built an API that developers hate. Bad blood between us. I think that's kind of a, that's a, I think that's a reference to some Taylor thing, bad blood, but I don't know. They can relate. Look what you made me do. Push changes whenever we felt like it. Now our API is a piece of. Okay. Uh, sorry. All right. Second verse. We used offensive language, thought it was cool. Developers didn't think so, thought we were fools. We broke their promises, changed the API, inconsistency killed them. We didn't even try. There's a bridge in honor of Taylor. Now we know we messed up bad. Our API was the worst we've had. We'll version it, add some docs, name things consistently, no more mocks. Take us home, Ken. All right. Look what you made me do. Built an API the developers hate. Bad blood between us, they can't relate. Look what you made me do. Push changes whenever we felt like it. Now our API is a piece of something. A piece of something. Okay. Well, um, before we go any further, we should probably introduce ourselves. So <laughs> yeah. we should good. do that. So, hey, everybody. My name is Lauren Schaefer, and I'm a developer advocate at Grammarly. I started my career as a software engineer at IBM before moving on to be a developer advocate at Sugar CRM, and then MongoDB, which is where I met Ken, and then now at Grammarly. I would love to connect with you on social. So both the QR code on the screen and the URL, which is gram.ly slash Lauren underscore CFE. Both those will take you to my link tree. You can find me on LinkedIn, X, and uh, TikTok. All right, and Ken, over to you. I see you have your cowboy hat on. You're a Wild West coder. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, I do a live stream um, every couple of weeks-ish um, with Cisco DevNet um, called Wild West Coding. Um, it's all about coding in Golang and creating an API and, and application with that. Um, so I've been at Cisco for a few years. Before that, I was at MongoDB, met Lauren there. Um, before that, I was an online um, instructor at an online learning place called Treehouse. And before that, did a bunch of other stuff. Um, 
yeah, so happy to be here and uh, let's uh, head on down the trail of uh, APIs here, Lauren. I can't, I can't with the Western <laughs> references. Okay, so I think I think that's let's let's just jump in. So um, we started building a. On. What's that? With our boots on. With our boots on, y yeah. Okay. Um, so we started building a Taylor Swift fan site so that Swifties can come to learn more about her tours and her concert films and more. Um, Ken, I'm just going to acknowledge the fact this is not the prettiest site we've ever built. Well, like, to be fair, none of my sites are pretty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But Those it's... <laughs> <laughs> We're not designers. This is not a talk on design. So everyone just pretend that this is a beautiful site. Okay. Um, how, how, what, what technology is behind this, this site? Um, Flask is um, kind of the, the main uh, Python library. And then for templates for the website, it's all in Jinja, which is one of the templating libraries. Nice. And what, what made you pick uh, Flask? Well, um, because I like Python, um, you know, and then as we were doing the Taylor site, um, I thought, huh, Taylor, one of her albums is 1989, the year she was born. That's the year of the snake in the Chinese uh, thing. Um, so, you know, there's deep rooting stuff there. Um, I guess I could have maybe gone with, uh, you know, a different language like Swift, but um yeah, I'm not that fast. I can't. I can't. That's some like Taylor level Easter eggs there. I'm I'm pretty impressed with that trail you made. Okay. So in order to get the information to include on the tours and the concert films pages, we're going to be accessing a Taylor Swift API. Now Ken and I created this API specifically for this presentation. So anybody here, feel free to hate on it. It's not a real well, it, it really works, but it's not a real deployed API. So it's totally fine. We can be the haters. Do you get the reference, Ken? Uh, sadly, yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. And you love gifts. We know that. All right. Oh. So let's, <laughs> let's jump right in and start out with our first API call. So I'm opening up VS Code, and here I've installed the Postman extension. Postman is great. It does a lot of things, um, but it makes it really simple to make API requests. So I'm going to start out by making a GET request on the, the root endpoint of our API. So I'm going to send that request. And the results pop up down here at the bottom, and it's giving us not a whole lot of information. So we've got tours url it's telling us is slash get all tours um and you know what ken since since you're here i'm just gonna blame everything that we hate on you so ken what what's the deal i why am i only getting information about one endpoint here because i mean you're mean yeah so are there more endpoints yes yeah but I'm not gonna okay tell you about them. <laughs> so rude so rude. And I also don't know if there's documentation or not. So like, this is all that I have to go on here. Documentation. Thanks, so, I mean, I kind of hate this. When you're designing your API, you want to make it discoverable, right? Developers want to be able to navigate through the API simply by using the information provided in API responses. So I guess I'm going to try this one. Um, API slash get all tours. Uh, didn't even work, Ken. Didn't huh. even work. Um, I wonder if it should be get alter tours and not get L tours. Probably. Yep. Love that typo. There we go. Hey, look at that. All right. I've so never made a typo in my life, Lauren. Say that again. That I've never made a typo in my life. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure it's very true. Never. Very true. Not me. Never. All right, so we're getting the information about all the tours, but I really had to work for it, which I kind of hate. So just kind of. Just kind of. I'm not I'm not angry yet. I just kind of hate. 
So first way to build an API that developers are gonna hate, hate, hate is to keep your endpoints like a secret. Like at this point, I'm still not sure what else this API can do since that response from it, when I called the root endpoint only listed one endpoint and I don't have docs. So how could we make this better, Ken? I mean, so if I was a nice developer, right? And like was making a, an API that people would actually like to use, um, you know, like you could make things discoverable. You could make doc, you could use something like Swagger perhaps to auto generate docs. Um, just from your code as you're going along. Um, yeah. And then when you make changes to your API, your docs could be automatically updated. But this talk is all about how to make an API developers will hate. So we wouldn't want to use something like Swagger to make things easy for them. We're trying to make this difficult. You're right. That was a bad question on my part. I'll try to refrain from asking you that in the future. Refrain, isn't that back to a Taylor Swift song reference? Sorry. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna pop back to this API response. So we've got the response body here. I'm gonna take a look at the headers that came back. So we can see we've got the date here. This really is live. Um, we can see the content type, which is not quite right, but I'm gonna let that go. We can see deprecation is set to true. So I guess you don't want me using this endpoint anymore, huh? Uh, no. No, no. Okay, so it looks like there's a link here related to the deprecation did notice. Do I do something right? Perhaps. You you have docs. Oh. What? Okay. Yeah. I'm only kind of nice, little. Kind of nice. nice. All right, let's take a look at this documentation. So it's saying the get all tours endpoint returns a list of Taylor Swift tours. That makes sense. And then there's this deprecation notice saying this endpoint has been deprecated because only an idiot would use this naming scheme. Use API slash V1 slash tours instead. Yeah. Ken. We can't what? call people idiots. Well, okay. Right? That doesn't feel very like kind or very inclusive. Honestly, it makes me afraid to like contribute <laughs> to this API because I don't know if you're gonna call me out. Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. Okay. Okay. Probably should use more more inclusive language. You're right. And and Thank you. You know, there are there's a, a lot of uh of resources out there for um, you know, inclusive language, things that uh, don't cut like a knife. That's right, yeah. So there's lots of guides available or you can use tools that will check for you. Um, and offensive language can range, right? There's, there's seemingly small stuff like using the pronoun he for anonymous developers, like all the way to hate speech. And the impact is going to vary, certainly, but it, it's, it all distracts. So you want to use inclusive language in your API and in your docs. All right, let's, let's flip back to that deprecation notice. It looks like you actually told me what endpoint to use instead, which I kind of like. You must have been You're in welcome. a good mood when you wrote this. You're welcome. <laughs> so let's, let's try that. I'm going to flip over to the response body. Hey, and it actually, it's working. So we've got um, there it is in, JSON. in JSON. I love that. Yes, yeah, so we've got an array of objects. Each object looks like it's related to one tour. So we've got all the tours here. Okay, this looks good, Ken. Well, I mean, she only has what, 7,000 tours? Or some, I don't know how many tours she's she's done but it seems like every few years i'm having to cut a big check to uh fuel her plane for my daughter to go to the concerts i'm sure they thank you for it yeah I, i'm sure yeah so let's take a look at the data that's in here we've got a title of the tour a unique id for each tour 
the date it started, the date it ended, the album associated with it, the number of shows, how many people attended, and then the set list, which is an array of, of strings. Each string represents one song. Encore, same thing, an array of strings. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, I do want to hit on this API slash V1 thing. Um, what's this V1 about? Well, in case you want to version your API, change the data, just change how it's getting accessed. Um, again, if I was a nice developer and wanted to make things usable and friendly, um, you know, you would have different versions so that as a, somebody calls the API, they know what to expect when they get it back. I love it. So this is actually not something I hate. I actually kind of like this. Um, there are a few different ways to handle API versioning, but this one is is nice and easy to follow. So two thumbs up for you on that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're getting information about all the tours. Is there a way I can get information about just one tour? Um, yes. <laughs> Do you want to share what it is? No, because I'm making this as difficult and as okay. challenging as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, okay. I would venture to guess that if I were to put a slash and then the tour ID number, um, like if you wanted the fearless tour, uh, because you are very fearless, um, Thank you. that you could do something like that and you just get back. <gasps> Look at that. So you just get back that, that data. That's nice. Convenient. That is convenient. Okay. I like that. <laughs> That's more difficult. <laughs> no. Okay. So I'm actually using these APIs in um, our fan site. Oh, look, we've got a nice wrapping here because I zoomed. Delightful. Um, so this tours page is actually calling that tours API to get, or the tours endpoint to get information about all the tours. And then if I click on more details, I'm getting information about just one tour. So I, there I'm calling tours slash five. So in this case, tours slash, or I was gonna say tours slash ID, tours slash five. I hope you followed that. Clear as I know how, Okay, perfect. Okay, this page looks pretty good. I think I did a good job implementing this one. This looks pretty good. I gotta jump down to the Eras tour because it it just came out. It's my favorite. And did you hear she's back on tour? Do you know the scoop? She's back on tour this weekend. In Southern South America, if memory serves. Yes. And Travis was there. It was a whole thing. Okay. I'm not going to get sidetracked, but it was very, I, I was all over TikTok getting the scoop. Okay. Let's take a look at the Ares tour. Fantastic. Ken, uh, this is a hot mess. Uh, Looks like the schema changed. Well, I think I, I would say that uh, she changed her, you know, her concert set list from a reasonable time frame to a concert that lasts four days. So you're blaming it on Taylor. Wow. Well, no. Pass the blame. Okay. Probably, probably back on me for, uh, you know, doing two different versions of the data all in the same uh, v1 of the api yeah i'm not really pleased with that that this should have definitely happened in v2 there, this there's no reason this should be happening in v1 so right. what's up i said okay okay i'm glad you agree with me all right let me go see what's happening in v2 i'm just gonna live live life on the edge and I'm going to make the update in my app. So I'm hopping over to app.py. Um, Ken, can you tell us what this, what, what does app.py do in this application? It kind of, I mean, it's the main controller kind of, of everything. All those, as you scroll down there, like on line 18, you have the app route. So that's just your index route. And um, you know, that handles the logic for that and tells it, uh, tells the application which page to return. Um, and then, so any of the logic for the uh, for the application um, gets handled in, in app.py. Cool. 
So this is actually where I make my API request too. So I'm just going to, I think you told me earlier you released V2, right? Um, maybe. Maybe. Okay, let's find out what happens. So I'm just going to update it to V2. This is going to update all my API calls everywhere. Okay, looks the same here. Let's take a look at Fearless. Ah, look, the schema got updated here. So now we've got that same, instead of being a list of strings, it's a list of acts. And same here. Okay, so did you fix it in V2 everywhere? Is that what happened? Let's say yes. Let's say yes. Okay, let's fix this because this is this is super uggers. Um, <laughs> can't let this go. All right, so I've got a, a loop in here that that prints out all the songs. I'm just going to get rid of this. Oh, I'm just going to get rid. You know, maybe. Why <laughs> won't it let me highlight? Okay, everything's fine. We're going to start over because who can who can think with all that? Copilot's getting it all sorts of. Usually, Copilot's right. That's not right. Okay, so what we want to do instead of lip, loose looping through the list of songs. Now we want to loop through a list of acts. So let me know if you see a typo, Ken, because, you know, live coding is always a good choice. Oh, I do it every couple of weeks. It's. Oh, yeah. What's the name of your stream again? It's Wild West Coding. Okay. Wild West Coder through Cisco. We're going to find it. Okay. So we're going to lip lit. List. Why can't. We're going to list through We're the loop. Iterate through um, the act. So for act in tour, and not the set list there. Oh, it actually got it. Okay, let's go close that that for loop so I don't forget. Uh, okay. Except not parentheses and not or uh, yeah, there you go. And then you have a dollar sign there. I'm gonna get rid of that. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay, we got a loop. Okay, what are we doing in there? We want to get loopy. We are. We are getting loopy. Okay, we want to print out probably the act ID would be helpful and the title of it. Yeah, that sounds like a, a great thing to do. Okay, let's make sure I haven't broken anything because you know what? Sometimes you do this and then it's like, oh, it worked. There you go. Okay. So Sometimes. then we'll. Sometimes technology works. Sometimes. Okay. Then I want to print out all the songs in each act, right? So. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Thanks for agreeing with me. I've learned that's the easiest way. <laughs> Thank you. It looks like Copilot got that. <gasps> Copilot? Yes. Okay. So let's review it. So it's saying for each song in our list of songs, Create a list item and print out the song. <gasps> Did it get it? Hey, that looks good. There we go. Now you got to go check and see if the Eras Tour actually looks less wonky. Look at that. All 10 acts. Holy Looking man, good. A long, long event. Yes. Can you guess how many times I've seen the movie so far? Um, 42. I wish. I wish. I've seen it four times already. <laughs> it's been out a month. It's so good. It's so good. I've seen all 10 acts. Okay. So we cleaned this up, right? So um, what were we talking about? Oh, it was so inconsistent. Your The schema was all over the place. So... Third way to build an API that developers will hate is to push your latest changes to your API whenever you feel like it. It's your version. Oh, so yeah. my API, I'm coding and I'll just do what I want, right? <laughs> Cowboy coding. Wild uh, West coding. Do what you want, man. Or do what one. you want. Thank you. You're so inclusive. Thank you. Um yeah, like I got, it was pretty frustrating and annoying that I, when I found that that Eras Tour concert data in V1 had a different schema from the other tours, like that change should have never made it into V1. Okay. Okay. 
Um, what could we do instead? I mean, you know, semantic versioning is, is a good thing. Um, if you're going to make big, huge uh, changes uh, that are breaking, um, version things. Do minor and patch version numbers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I agree. Um, and building on that same idea of versioning, there's actually another thing that I hate here. And that's that there's no notification system for breaking changes. <laughs> what do you want from me? You want to <laughs> notify? Here, let me, uh, here, let me text you. Thank there, you. there, I'm changing the API. That would be really delightful. Thank you, Ken. Um, maybe like in documentation? Yeah, yeah. So fourth way is developers call your API again and you break it like a promise. So I, I found it very irritating that the schema changed in V1 of the API without any warning, right? I want a notification, maybe maybe a text, maybe that's a bit much, but like maybe in the API itself or in the documentation or in an email, letting me know. All right. Thank you. Okay, next time. Next time, thank you. I also need time to adapt to these changes. So luckily you didn't take down V1 of the API immediately. But right, like I need a guarantee that an older version is going to be supported for some number of months after a new version is released. So now I need to support multiple versions. If you make breaking changes, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And then I also need to know like what has changed between the versions. So I know what what I need to change in my app and what I need to test. I I, I kind of was just guessing to figure out what that new schema was. Okay. Thank you. Fair point. Thank you. All right, continuing on, let's take a look at the Concert Films page. So I've been meaning to build this, so I thought we could build it here together. All right. OK, so heading back to Postman, we've got this move, this tours endpoint telling us about all the tours. And Ken, I think you mentioned earlier you've got a new endpoint I can use for this. Um, movies. Movies. That makes sense. Because you want it in movies. Oh, or not. Um, let's, I mean, we had tours, right? So movies seem like that would make sense. Um, but since I know that you don't like it when I do mean things like this, maybe I just did movie. Movie? Huh. Ken. Okay, that's it's just like a small inconsistency. Like that's kind of irritating. If it, it should be movies and tours or movie and tour. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Okay. Back to, we're we're naming things the way I want to name them. Fine. I mean, I should have called it like tires. <laughs> I guess at least this kind of makes sense. Almost. All right, I'm gonna almost. I'm gonna try to use this in my app. Let's see how it goes. So over in app.py, that's this is the file we talked about earlier. It routes all the requests that come into the Taylor Swift fan site. I've already got a function that um, is routing uh, requests to the movies URL. So let's actually call the API. So I'm going to say response equals, oh, Copilot's got it. Almost. Yeah. Copilot thinks it should be movies too. It's not just me. Yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. So then we need to just process it. AI clearly hasn't, you know, mapped into my brain yet to understand my uh, my stuff. Sure. Sure. Um, so I'm processing the response back. And then I just need to pass that over to the template. So I'm going to say movie info equals movies. And I'm actually just going to go make sure I didn't break anything. Nothing should change here, but sometimes things go wrong. Hey, nothing broke. Progress. I know. <laughs> okay, so this is passing the movie info to my movies template. So I'm going to open that up. And in place of this coming soon placeholder text, I'm going to just drop the movie info. That seems like a uh, reasonable thing. Hey, look at that. Okay, 
we're actually getting movie data back. Um, it's not pretty, but like it's working. So we are not designers, Lauren. <laughs> we are not designers, but I feel like even though I'm not a designer, I know that this is not good. No, but I think too, like you could iterate over that that list, right? Just like you did with the in the tours, and like it, that's not that complicated to do. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it's going to be very similar to this, right? I'm just going to loop through the data and display it. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that. Like every good developer, let's just um, let's copy that for loop. Yeah. So whenever we talk about tours, we want to talk about movies instead. So I'm going to do a manual refactor here. So for movie in the movie info, shout if I make a typo here. Let's print the movie title, the movie number. You want an I there, you put move. Yeah. I sure do. Oh, you're being nice, Ken. Thank you. There are, there are moments. There are moments. Okay, the album associated with the movie, that seems relevant. The date the movie started, that's good. Movies don't really have end dates. Like the Eras Tour movie just seems to keep keep going. I, I keep thinking it's the last weekend and then I'm like, I just gotta go one more time and then I find out there's more show times. So we'll see. Number of shows, that doesn't really make sense here. I'm gonna deal with this more details link later. That looks like it'll be a pain. Okay. Uh, partial project. Partial progress here. Um, credit. Yeah, so we, we are successfully looping through all the movies, but not really any data is getting displayed. Oh, um, yeah, probably fun. because uh, the data is uh, uh, not what you're calling, right? Like the movie title, I think it's movie name. What? You changed it from title to name? Sure. Okay. Yes, Ken. All right, the movie ID is right. How about associated album? Did you change it to related album? Yep. Okay, and then start it's, date. The uh, release date, yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna get as mad about, about that one. That one, that one kind of makes sense. Okay, we got the data in. There were a lot of little paper cuts there, but we made it, right? Okay, there's one more thing that's bugging me here, and maybe it's not bugging anybody else, but there's a particular date format that I really like to use, which is what I've got over here on the tours page. It's month, uh, day, comma, year. I just think it looks pretty. Um, and I did that by, uh, I wrote a little date formatter function that brings in the date from the API and then formats it. So I got to do that here. I got to make sure my date formats match. Can we do that real quick? Uh, sure. No, you don't have a choice. <laughs> We're going to clean it up. Here we go. So back, back in app.py, I'm in my movies function here. Are you laughing? Nope. No, no. <gasps> Look at Copilot. Let's see. It's saying for every movie in the movies list, if it has a release date, format it. So let's save it back. I think this is right. Let's take a look. That's not pretty. Um, so what it's saying is that the time data year dash month dash day does not actually match the expected format of day space month space year. Did you change up the date format in the two APIs? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so to fix that, I'd have to go in and update my format date function to handle more than one date format. Okay, that's kind of annoying. I'm not, I'm not gonna make people watch me do that. So we're just gonna deal with the ugly dates for now, but that's kind of irritating. So- Please to be of service. Okay. 
So fifth way to build an API that developers will hate is to name things as the mood strikes. Who cares if inconsistency causes death by a thousand cuts? That's definitely your motto here. There were a few things that irritated me. So we had the movie's endpoint was movie singular, which did not match tours plural. The naming of the fields and the response data did not match the tours API. And then the date formatting also did not match. The dates are in there, right? No, no. The data's in there. Okay, I guess it's better than nothing, but it's kind of irritating. Yeah. So you know, I think you know, I'll, I'll take off my mean hat, put my uh, real developer hat on. It's one of the one of the challenges when you're dealing with a document model that because it's so flexible, you can make these, um, I won't call them errors, but make these mistakes, if you will, very easily, right? It, it becomes very easy to say, oh, I'm going to work on my movies collection now, and I'm going to call it release date versus um, start date or whatever, um, title versus name, any of those things um, becomes very Easy, so it's just something you need to watch out for, and you know, having clean data um, is an important thing, and it, it makes it much nicer when you're trying to make APIs if your data is clean and consistent. Yeah, consistency matters. Like one inconsistency, we're all probably going to be fine, but like when they start to add up, it can create real frustration. Mm. All right. Yeah. Okay. You're back to mean Ken. Back to mean Kim. <laughs> All right. So I've got this concert films page. I think my next step is going to be to start building out uh, a page for each of the tours or each of the films. So let's go take a look at the API. Um, now with the tours endpoint, you let me do like tours slash five. Let's take a look at... Um, Let's take a look at the Eras Tour because it's my favorite one right now. The Eras Tour film. This actually worked. First try. Love that. Let's. Yeah. Yeah, you did it. Okay, let's take a look at movie number two. The Lorax. Ken, why why is this in your 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 movies? Well, she voiced a character in there, and they're singing, so it's kind of a concerty movie. Okay. Well. Um. Maybe not a concert, but it is, it's a musical. All right. Well, I don't think that should be in there. We're, let's, let's come back to that in a few minutes. I'm, I'm going to put a pin in that. Um, let's take a look at movie number one. What, what is this? I've been rate limited. Yep. <laughs> come on. Uh, I kind of hate that. You got to pay me. You want the data you got to pay. <laughs> okay. So the sixth way to create an API that developers will hate is to rate limit whenever and however is convenient for you. It's fair that your API is not around. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Ken, you mentioned one reason might be, you said it kind of sarcastically, like maybe you want to rate limit so people will pay you. Um, yeah. So if you have a, a subscription model, right, like clearly... Taylor Swift concert data is going to be the next big thing. And totally. we, this app will be the only place on the planet that you can access it. So we're going to charge people. So, you know, we will, uh, as we're building out the, the API, you can get access to one tour a day for free. And, but if you want more than that, we're going to, we're going to charge it. Um, but in all seriousness, so you can have various subscription models, different tiers, get access. You know, um, that's one reason why you might want to rate limit. Um, prevent denial of service attacks might be another one. Um, just, you know, if you're having all your data up in the cloud to prevent your cloud costs from going too high and your network costs going too high, you might want to rate limit access to help you know, our, our Taylor Swifty business, um, uh, keep our own costs down. Yeah. So those are all and, legitimate you know, reasons. To 
to make sure that people really don't like our API, we don't want to publish those anywhere and let anybody know about it so that, um, yeah. Again, yeah. I don't want to document anything. Yes, yes. Because you're going to, you could break an app unexpectedly if people are not ready for your rate limits, which is very problematic. All right. Um, we're, we're at six to seven, so let's keep rolling. Um, you know what, let's finish up by going back to what I mentioned about the Lorax. So we've got this, this list and it's all of her concert films, 1989, Reputation, her lover concert. The Lorax does not belong here. So I'm going to delete it. We might have to do, uh, disagree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> That's not, what is it? Agree to disagree? That never really made a lot of sense to me, but okay. All right. So you're gonna, you're gonna get rid of some data. Uh, you're gonna go to delete. Yeah, let's do a delete request for the first time today. I don't wanna delete all the movies. Let's just delete oh, movie really? two. <laughs> but, oh, it worked. Look at we've got a, a stat a successfully deleted message here. We've got a 202 accepted. Delightful. Let's go take a look yeah. at all. Let's go take a look at all the movies again. It's still here. Uh -huh. Ken, why why is it still here? Because I like messing with the status codes. <laughs> Ken, okay, why am I getting a success message if it didn't actually get deleted? Because I'm mean. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't want you to like this API. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the seventh and final way to build an API that developers will hate is don't blame me for only returning the data. Status codes lose all their meaning. I think it's super easy to just like forget about status codes and just send back the success message right away. But you do want to have you do want to send the right status codes. You do want to have meaning to them, right? It's so much right. easier to debug. Debug and test, right? Like you can test a lot easier if the HTTP, HTTP status code of you know, 202 comes back than just successfully deleted. Like, again, who knows what that, that means, successfully deleted. And maybe, you know, if it's... Uh, me doing it, I changed that successfully deleted verbiage to y'all's data just got, <laughs> got <laughs> or something, right? Like you don't know. So that's what, I mean, there is a reason for status codes. For sure. But who, <laughs> yeah. All right, can you put your nice hat on for a minute? Oh, I'll try. Okay, so we've talked about seven ways to build an API that developers are gonna hate. Let's take a minute and just flip them and talk about how to make an API that developers will love. We can do that. All right, you wanna take the first one? Make your API discoverable. I mean, you let people know what your endpoints are gonna be um, through navigation, um, you know, provide documentation, let people know what's, what's available uh, and how it's what they should expect when they are interacting with your API. For sure. And if they have to log in to do certain things, I mean, all, all those sorts of things. Yeah. All right. Two. What's next? Oh, it helps. Oh, you know what? It helps if I go in the right direction Two. use inclusive language. So don't distract readers or cause harm by using offensive language. Be kind and use inclusive language. Um, version of the API. Oh. Did you see that hearts came out? Did you I, do that? No, but that might be like How an did AI you do thing. That? And there we go. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's adorable. Yeah. Uh, so the next, next way is version your API. We've talked about this and it, this really hits in several different, um, Categories here, I think, but versioning your API, making it discoverable um, with different versions and documentation, um, 
you know, when you make breaking changes, it happens, right? Like uh, Swift's concert changed dramatically um, when she went into whatever her latest tour was. She did a whole bunch of different things that she hadn't done before. So that data dramatically changed. Um, so make new versions. Yeah. Number four, create and follow a process for introducing breaking changes. So if you do introduce breaking changes, be sure to notify your users so they have time to react. Be clear about what those breaking changes are. Carrier pigeons, that's my solution. I, I like text better. I, I think your first idea was better. Okay. Uh, be consistent with names and types. Don't, don't uh, you know, the death by a, a bunch of paper cuts um, really can add up to a lot of frustration. And really, not only from the API standpoint, frustration, but the coding to access the API really becomes frustrating when trying to code against it and then reread the code and debug the code when it's on release date instead of start date and all those various things trying to go through and like, what is going on with, with all this? So consistency is key. Mm -hmm. Be clear about rate limits. If you choose to rate limit your API, be clear about what those limits are. Developers are probably relying on your API and if they run into a rate limit or an unexpected outage, it could break their app. Use status codes appropriately. When one does, it's much, much easier for developers to debug if there's an issue um, and determine if it's something on their end or on the APIs and itself. Status codes really are important. There's a reason that they exist and they should have meaning behind them. For sure. So when we follow these principles, we're gonna get an API that developers will love. So I think let's wrap up by um, updating the chorus from the song that we shared at the beginning of the presentation. What do you think? I'm gonna let you do that. Okay. okay, here we go. Look what we made it do. Built a good API that developers love. No bad blood between us, a push and a shove. Look what we made it do. Push changes with care when it was right. Now our APIs, a delight. Do it. Ah! <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we actually made it in our hour. Look at us. We've got time for questions. So if you have any questions, um, please drop them in the chat. And I think Brian's going to, there's Brian. There's me. Everybody could join in today first. I mean, you know, I think Lauren and I, um, I'll speak for Lauren. We've had a lot of fun doing this. Um, uh, yeah, you could tell you all had a lot of fun building it. And, and yeah, this was, that was a lot of fun to watch. So, um, and the chat has been busy. So hopefully Brian, you have some good, good nuggets uh, from oh, there. You know, yeah. People really bought into the Taylor Swift uh, theming of this. Don't and we had, so, you, you know, go back and, and review the comments. If you want more puns, you can use <laughs> at, at, when you, re, if you do this session again, um, because yeah, they, they really went all in on the Taylor Swift puns. Um, and I didn't know, does that actually work for me too? Or is it just you all that like, you have to twist it just right. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. It doesn't seem to work for me. Maybe my hands just can't make a decent heart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never seen that before, but that was cool. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that was a really great presentation. I really, I really enjoyed it. And I, I mean, I can say like, as, as somebody who has, uh, used a lot of APIs. I've run into almost every single one of the things you, you've mentioned before. I think that that the inconsistent um, naming is a big one, but I've also like the, the the rate limiting without telling you in advance with, or even telling you that hey, there are rate limits, but you'll know because you'll get back information that that comes in that tells you how much you know rate what's the current rate limit is that's that frustrates me because it's like well okay i only find that out like really it's it's one of those things that developers only really look at it's like wait this broke what happened and then you go looking and it's like oh you know you figure out oh it got rate limited and then you're like digging into the documentation it's it's never like quite so easy like to unless you're very upfront about rate limits 
like to figure that out you're only going to find that in a in a time of frustration basically you um, only find it out on black friday right when your app crashes because everybody's using your mm-hmm. api and you're like no nope, sorry you've bought one thing for me this year that's enough like it's it's yeah highly frustrating so, so so do you have like thoughts about you know what are some of the best ways to to kind of create documentation that makes this easy i mean i think all of the things you listed in that seven ways to make but like big one of that is just building the documentation and and like how do you how do you address like rate limits in a way that makes it easy for developers to find as opposed to finding it out when they hit it? I mean, for me, you know, things like Swagger um, that are going to generate your um, documentation kind of automatically as you're going along um, work well. And then for things like rate limits, just document it and be upfront about about it. And oftentimes, um, you know, API users are good with rate limits as long as they kind of understand the reason why behind it, right? Like if... Yeah. For this particular, you know, API that we've built, if we, if Lauren and I decide to publish this on a website, and we're paying for it out of our pocket, we might rate limit it strictly for our own personal um, financial reasons, right? And like, oh, it's being hosted, you know, the data is being hosted on a cloud someplace that's costing us, you know, ten cents a hit or the, whatever it is. And so, hey, Lauren, you know, how much can you give us a month? Well, and now all of a sudden we're going to rate limit everything to cap it at, you know, 50 cents a month worth of data access. So once anybody in the world hits it five times, it's done or whatever. But just be up front behind what the limits are and kind of some of the reasoning behind it. And then provide a way to contact the the owner of the API and say, hey, is there a workaround for that? Like if I'm willing to pay you a million dollars to unload my, you know, to get more access, is that even a remote possibility? Mm-hmm. Um, anybody out there is listening, if you're willing to send Lauren and I both a check for a million dollars, we will open up the API for to check towards. Um, again, I'm speaking for Lauren, uh, <laughs> but I'm guessing that she would be happy with a check for a million bucks to open up the API. I would. Okay. Safe bet. Yeah. I, I think I think I think that's that's good advice. Um, I almost think so because I know sometimes APIs differ. There's rate limits depending on what you're doing. Like if you're doing, if you're reading like a list of stuff, like they 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 might have a, no limit. But if you're doing like posts or puts or whatever, like suddenly there's a limit. And I think having somehow putting that in the documentation for that method, like some very noticeable, like hey. Yep. Just be aware this particular endpoint is is rate limited. Yeah, because that one I've hit a bunch of times and it's it's super frustrating. Um, you know, I, I will admit to having like put in lots of delays in my code to run in loops and things like that to like not hit rate limits that you know cause me issues. Um, you know, so and then on on the version, I think versioning is is a tough one for folks, like because you know it's 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 a big deal for every user, like in and so it's hard to know when to move to another version versus not move to another version, or how do you manage those different versions and things like that, especially with like with REST. Um, do you all have like? tools you recommend for kind of helping with with these kinds of things or um, are there like any kind of um like api management tools you've found to be really helpful with with kind of handling like rate, rate limits or like versioning or things like that yeah so as far as deciding when to bump something to another version i love semver.org it it'll walk you through this should be a, a minor change this should be a patch this should be a major change um, and what we do on my team, um, we don't have a REST API, but we do have an API that developers can call. And so we use um, change sets. And I'm I am not sure exactly what technology is behind that. But whenever we push uh, a change up, 
we push our, our merge request, it checks to make sure we have a change set. And as part of that, we have to specifically indicate if it should be a patch, a minor, or a major update. And so it's it's forcing us to think about it every time. Then when we do a release, it'll it'll include a list of all those changes that went into that release. And so then it's very clear, oh, this release should be a major or a minor or a patch. And so that's how mm -hmm. we're we're managing it. Okay. Ken, any anything on your end or are you just yeah, I mean, I think you know, automation is is a great thing, um, and Lauren hit hit a bunch of them there. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That those are those are all great tips. Um, I I don't have any audience questions, although James is Eberhardt is willing to send you a one million dollars for your API as long as you accept Venmo. Um, um, so yeah, I think just reach out. Perfect. Yeah, um, reach out. <laughs> I, I will join Venmo for a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this was this was so much fun. I, I love kind of the back and forth you all had going there, and I think you know it. It even even if it was like worst practices, this was like really a a good list of of things that like you know I think we've like I said we've all run into, and and definitely it, our are easier mistakes to make than you might think when you're developing it. Well, I, I was just going to say, I, yeah. like for myself, uh, not only have I run into them as a consumer, but sadly, mm -hmm. I think I've run into a lot of them as a, an API producer as well. And, you know, just making an API, as long as you're not thinking of a lot of these things, they slowly kind of creep in. And then you wind up using it, you know, language that isn't inclusive. You wind up doing naming things that are goofy. Um, sometimes you wait way too long to version your API and that makes all sorts of headaches or, mm -hmm. or week you're, oh, we need, you know, it's version 362 of this API. And you're like, well, it just came out last week. Why are we on version 362 already? Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of that that happens out there in the industry. So moving all these things more to top of mind as you're both creating and consuming APIs, I think is, uh, is an important thing. Agreed.